The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'll just finish off with a story that somebody told me a few days ago, literally a few days ago. I have a friend, his name is Chazen Brecher. He's a very, very talented cantor. He lives in Williamsburg, a young Chazen. And he shared this story with me. Last year, he was invited, Parshas Para, which means a few weeks before Pesach, after Purim, to do a Sheva Brachas in Williamsburg. He was hired for a, for a weekend to come Friday and to Davin Friday night and Shabbos day for a, for a family Simcha Sheva Brachas in Williamsburg. Okay. It happened to be Parshas Parah. When we read the extra Parsha about the Parah Adum of the Red Heifer. Now Chazan Brecha is a Chazan. He's a real Chazan. So you know Chazanim Davin like Chazanim Davin. So he tells me he was standing Shabbos morning and he was davening slowly and singing every paragraph with his beautiful, he's a very beautiful voice, cantorial melodies. And somebody in the crowd, who was not the person who hired him, and was not the Baal Simcha, just somebody who was there, for whatever reason, didn't like the way he was davening. So from his place, he's like, no, 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 no. You know, Come on, like, hurry up. And he goes over to him, and he's like, you know, knock it off. He didn't say, but just like, knock it off with his hand. He made his gesture, do it much faster. So Chazan Brecha told me, he says, Rabbi, well, I realize, you know, he didn't hire me, and there's a whole crowd here, and we're davening, and it was a beautiful davening, and I don't really have allegiance to him, and he shouldn't be calling the shots. It's not even his shul or his simch. So I just ignored him, and I continued. But I, as I ignored him, and I continued, he became more frustrated, and was screaming, and was hollering, and made a ruckus in the place. I said, okay, listen, it is what it is, I'm just going to do my thing. He davens Shmonastri, he finishes Shmonastri, now it's time for Chazar Sashatz to repeat the Amidah. So this person comes over and says, you're fired as a Chazan, I will do the Chazar Sashatz myself. And he says, go, go, we don't need your Chazanas, I'll do it. He was a little surprised by uh, this person's uh, audacity, let's call it that way. So he says, listen, he's not going to make a fight here. But the crowd says, one second, we hired him as the shliach tzibur. He is the shliach of the tzibur, not you. So if you want to say all these blessings, you can't. Because he is the one that the tzibur appointed, not you. The guy apparently was from, so that worked for him. <laughs> so he sat down. And Chazan Brecha finished Chazar Sashatz. He take out the Sifri Torah. And as he went to the bimah, somebody announced, this week is Parshas Parah, so we have two Sifri Torah. So this person gets up by the bimah and said, because it's Parshas Parah, it was so appropriate that the chazan sounded like a para. The chazan sounded like an ox. Like they say in Yiddish, avasa ox. That's what his voice was like. So we actually have an illustration this Shabbos of what a para is when you heard this chazanas. Chazan Brecher is a very refined person. He's a friend of mine. He's an edelah person. So he told me, what am I going to respond person is screaming at me, they're calling me a party. He says, it is what it is. I didn't say a word. They read the Torah and shine. After davening, he says, a yid comes over to me. His name is Mordechai Hersh Green. And he says, listen, the Chazal talk about somebody who's embarrassed and they love him. And they don't fight back. There's a good friend of mine in Williamsburg. His name is Berger. And they've been married seven years. They haven't had children. And because this is a special thing that you just did, you brought in so much uh, kindness to the world, you taught people such a lesson, I want to ask you to give a blessing to this couple that they should have a baby. And he got him their name, her name, the, the wife's name, and her mother's name, and the husband's name, and his mother's name. And he said, please daven for them to Hashem and give them a blessing. And that this great merit that you just had, that you just brought into the world, it should be for them, would you mind? He says, why would I mind? My pleasure. That the whole, whatever merit I had, should be for them to have a child. And he called them after Shabbos with the exact names and asked the daven for them. And that's what he did. And life moves on. This year, Parshas Para, they made a Kiddush for their daughter. This year, Parshas Para. So this person who was the Shatchen called them up and said, you should just know, 12 months later, they have a baby girl, they're making a, a Kiddush. And Chazabrech told me he went to the Kiddush. He didn't think anybody would know who he was because they weren't at the, at the Sheva Brachas. There was just somebody there. He says, but the father of the baby came over to him and said, I know who you are. Thank you very much. We see from here, we see from here another example 
the power of people to be able to live in a larger emotional space. There's a choice every day. Am I going to be living in a world of pettiness and smallness and katnus and stinginess and vicious reciprocity? And you did this and you said this and you said this, but you didn't say this. And therefore I'll remember it for years. And it infects not just me, it affects my family, it affects my home. Or a person could choose to live from a place of godless, from a place of, of greatness, not from a place of naivete. It's not naive, it's from a place of, of greatness, from a place of, uh, of love, from a place of divine consciousness. Or in the words of the Chizkuni Rabbi Yosef, Pcharshar, Ha'ava Eilai Tenatzeich Esasina. Let the love defeat the negativity. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire dot org.